Marcus Feldman. What's up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chris, over here. Congratulations on a big win. Um, so you started your career here, 2009, fighting for the great Lou Neglia, and you come back to Atlantic City and get another big win. How does it feel? Man, it feels amazing. Uh, I was 4-0 here, started my pro fighting career here, never lost, came back. Last four years, I haven't been in a fight where I didn't break my leg. <laughs> so to be back in here, come out re relatively uh, feeling fresh, other than a nice shiner. Uh, man, I, it's fighting is fun, man. It's so stressful before you get in there, and then afterwards you rip that bandaid off. You come out, you feel like a million bucks, and and to get the love like I got from Atlantic City, you know, I'm you know t I'm sure there's tons of Long Island guys here and uh, people from New York, and it just felt such great. I just felt such great love. I'm happy I was able to get the W. And what was your over overall assessment of your opponent? I mean, he was dropping and uh, the, complaining about the eye pokes and look at your eye. I think the irony is crazy, but what, what's your assessment of your opponent and uh, this fight overall? I, I'll, never, I'll never question a guy if he's saying he gets poked in the eye, but you can't just drop every time you feel like something's touching your eyeball, you know? Um, you know, he poked me in the eye bad one time and I stood there, took it. Unless the ref's going to say something, I don't drop. Uh, you know, I come from a wrestling background. It's a similar thing. You can't look to the ref for things. Not gonna, they're not going to help you. Sometimes it's going to go against you. You got to be always ready and ready to defend yourself at all times. And uh, you know, he dropped again. I don't know. Like I was looking for a way out. I don't know. But that, like, you can't just turn your back and, and fall to the ground every time that your eyeball feels poked. And how quickly do you want to get back in the cage? I mean, I'm hearing rumblings about uh, UFC coming back to Newark in June. Uh, would you want uh, like a quick, uh, quick, um, you know, rest period and then get back in there? You know, I gotta, I gotta get back with the team. Uh, like I said, my family. This been man. This has been four years of uh, a lot. So I'm gonna enjoy this win. Um, watch the video see where I'm at, see what potentially could be next, and uh, hopefully we got some fun fights maybe on the horizon. And we'll see, man. I'm 39 years old. My leg is just getting back to where it's not painful. Look, I threw leg kicks today. I threw head kicks. Um, I, w I could even throw my leg last time. And also the last time I fought, I couldn't circle to my right. I couldn't load my right leg. Thanks to TrinityGoldNutrition.com, it's been honestly saving me and saving my career. You look great. Congratulations. Quick Thank question. You. Do you care at all about the reversal of a TKO to they sent it to the scorecards and gave you a 30-27? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously I'd rather a TKO, but I, I get it. I won all three rounds, so I'll, t I'll take it. Chris, it's been obviously a very long road, as you, as you mentioned, as we all know. Um, agonizing at times, right? I imagine you've thought about this moment, thought about the moment where you'd come back and, and, and have your hand raised and be able to run around and celebrate and that kind of thing. Did it live up to everything kind of you put through your head? Man, uh, yeah, you, you have those moments and then you have doubts and uh, to, to actually get that win like that. And the energy of the, the crowd is what built me up to start running around the octagon like that or outside the octagon like that and really soak it all in. Um, the energy was, was freaking insane in there. So I soaked it all up. I enjoyed every bit of it. I mean, obviously, you've, you've reached the pinnacle before. You've been the champion. You've, you've defended the belt. You've, you've done that. But where does this kind of – the energy that, that kind of ran through you in that moment seem very different? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It kind of reminds me – so it's like almost like when – it was, it was bigger than some of my title defenses, uh, the feeling I got. Not as big as the first win when I had against Anderson Silva. Um, it kind of reminded me of when I won in my, in my hometown in Long Island in uh, 2017 against Kelvin Gaslam. I was on a three-fight skid after being undefeated world champion. The world was against me, and then I came into into my hometown and uh, to show that I still have it. And I was able to get a finish over a guy like Kelvin Gaslam, and that, that energy was insane that night on, on Long Island uh, Nassau Coliseum. And this this unexpectedly was right up there, man. I, I, I didn't realize how much pent up emotion I had in me after everything I've been through. I mean, did, did are you like conscious when you're going through this or is this just like you're acting on pure instinct as you're just running around and doing all this flexing? <laughs> that was kind of, that, that was an out of body of ex experience, man. I wish everybody could, could feel what that just felt like. That was so cool. Thank you. Thank you. Six and O oh, Atlantic City. I think seven and one against Brazilians and three and O oh against Silvas. I hope you tweet Mr. Hawani.
That's great. Can, we, can you tweet that for me and I'll retweet it? <laughs> I'm not the best with the stats, but that was pretty damn good. I like that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dude, I, I thought it was Alex Pajeda in there with the teeth kicks, the, the roundhouses, or, or Mr. Wonderboy Thompson. Uh, was that a focus in the camp to unleash the hips and let the kicks fly? Uh, yes, it was, but I was also cognizant of last fight I, I had the idea I was going to be throwing kicks and stuff, and I just couldn't let my body, and my, my brain wouldn't let my body do it. So I'm happy that this time I was able to throw that and I got that back in my game. You know, I've been in this game for a really long time and I've picked up so many skills along the way. And it's, very, it's not very often that you get to actually show it in front of the world. So I'm glad I, got, I was able to show some different skills that I have that I picked up and uh, threw some of it on the table here for some people to see. And the rope with dope, I thought that was Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Yo, call me uh, Weidman Ali. What can I tell you, man? I look, I look slick out there. <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. I don't know. I kind of remind me I fought Leo, when I fought Leo Machi. If you go back to that fourth round and fifth round, there was times he had me up against the cage, and I was calling him on, and I was kind of rope doping a little bit there too. It felt good, man. It felt it felt good to be able to take some shots, you know, not get knocked out, you know, just eat it and fucking want more. That's how it felt, man. I just actually loved it, and I know my coaches were trying to get me to be smart out there and circle and keep distance. I was really trying to walk him into my right hand, but he he wasn't stepping. He wasn't coming forward at me, especially in that third round. And it was kind of surprising. I'm like, didn't I win the first two rounds? Why is he not coming at me right now? Um, so I wasn't able to lace him up with the right hand like I wanted to. Um, yeah. Do you Amazing, remember, brother? Safe travels home. Thank you, buddy. Chris, Do you remember? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, I wanted to ask, you know, the first round, you come out super aggressive. Second round was a bit, you know, closer. However, it seemed in the, in the final round, something, bit, you know, something took over. Um, if you could walk me through kind of the shift of mindset and, uh, you know, the W to seal the deal. Yeah, just, you know, you're in the third round and you don't know what's going on in the scorecards. I mean, my coaches had me winning 2 0. Obviously, the judges had me up 2 0 as well, but you never know. So you just got to dig deep, you know, and uh, the, the man with the more will is going to win. That's it. To follow that up, you know, um, everyone's mentioned, you know, uh, it's it's just a coming home for you. You know, you started here, big win tonight. You know, um, at the end of the day, you know, has there been any thoughts or has there been any, uh, at least, um, you know, consideration of possibly hanging up the gloves? Oh, yeah. I, uh, I, I've considered it plenty of times. And uh, I think if I would have lost tonight, if I would have, uh, you know, just – not got my hand raised, it could have been the last time. I, you know, I, I had that in my mind. If I was in there and I was like, ah, I just, I don't have it anymore, I, I, may, have, I may have put the gloves down. But uh, it didn't happen. I got the win, so here I am. I guess, Chris, what's kind of the goal for, for you from here on out, do you feel like? I feel like the last few fights, it's been kind of building yourself back physically and proving to yourself that you can get in there and do what you guys do, um, which is incredible within itself without the injuries. Uh, so I guess, what, what is kind of the motivation from, from here? What's the the goal uh you know i just i still think i have a lot of potential and i've had a lot of adversity and i still think i have it um and so until i don't think i have it anymore i'm here man i love it this is fun i still got my brains um i still got my looks <laughs> and so until that one of those start going all right i'm like i'm here man this is this is too much fun and i think uh you know i was i was i was meant to do this man i've been doing this for a really long time you know, we said a prayer before we walked out. I said the prayer with the team, and it's like, man, I got to reflect and be grateful. I've been on the mat since I'm a little kid, and I just wanted to go out there and let my instincts fly uh, and uh, go out there and have fun, really. Win or lose, you know, it's, it's you know, glory to God no matter what. So I'm just happy uh, it worked out for me tonight. Thanks. Do you remember what happened at the end of round two? You kind of yelled at him. He yelled back. You shook heads. Like, did you guys say something to each other? I think that's what he went down with the eye poke. No, 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 at the very end of round two. Oh, that was like the he was coming at me, hitting me. I think I just screamed and in you, his face. I was like, let's go, what, what? And then he yelled something. He's, I think he doesn't really speak good English. <laughs> so he yelled something in Portuguese, I think. What? I think you high fived each other with your heads. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd like to see the replay. Um, yeah, your, your guess is as good as mine. I was in the zone, man. I was just intense. I wanted him to eat his freaking fists at that point. And he was he was okay with letting me eat them. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta be able to bite down your mouthpiece and just want it. You know what I mean? And uh, that's I think separates some 
fucking real tr tr true tough dudes, you know, yeah. and, and separates the not so tough dudes. Chris, W-O-N-D-A-C, Mike here. Listen, welcome back to Atlantic City. Uh, I like to base it on that as well. Two things. Talk about that Northeastern love out there once again. And then also, you were able to, to uh, divulge to us what you guys spoke about after that uh, the uh, decision, the stoppage. Yeah, um, it, well, the, the energy in there was amazing uh, to, to feel that love. You know, I never really get my hopes up on the walkout. I don't know what to expect. I was blown away that when I was in Boston last fight. You know, Boston and New Yorkers don't really see eye to eye, especially when it comes to sports. <laughs> so for me to get that type of love in Boston was crazy. So and, and coming to Atlantic City, this is Easter weekend. I don't know how many people are going to be here. A lot, a lot, you know, it's a tough weekend. Um, and to get that type of love uh, and to give that love back was was awesome. What was the second part of that question again? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, listen, I said, I, I apologize if I poach you in the eye, but I gave him some advice. I go, bro, you, and I told his coach this, his coach is translating to him. I just said, listen, I got poked in the eye, too. You can't just, get, every time you get poked in the eye, you can't drop to your knees and turn away and look for as much time as possible. Like, it's going to catch up to you, and it caught up to him, to be honest. Do I, did I want to poke him in the eye? No, I'm unhappy that I poked him in the eye. But when you're fighting with these small gloves on, man, it kind of just happens, man. It's not like I'm – if I had what it takes to think about getting my, eye, my, my, hand, my finger in his eyeball, why would I even do that? I'd just be able to put my, my fist right on his chin every time I wanted. You know what I mean? It's harder than you think to be like, I'm going to eye poke this guy. It's just unintentional crap that happens when you have small gloves on and you've got fingers extended, you know, in, in, in gloves. It's just – it's unfortunate, you know. I, like I said, I got poked in the eye too. Uh, so, and I've, I've been poked in the eye plenty of times in fights. Tonight's, uh, you know, basically a homecoming fight for you. Uh, of course, you have like a lot of your friends and teammates as well as your family here. What was it like soaking up the love after you got the victory? Uh, I mean, it's just amazing. Like to get all that love after the fight was, like, you know, I don't want to sound like a beating drum, but it's just unbelievable. I'm so grateful. Uh, yeah, I'm just happy that everybody was here to, to show me love. I and, and my family, man, my family's been through so much with me and I torture them, you know, these fight weeks and fight camps and everything that goes into this, all the surgeries I've had, they've been by my side the whole damn time. And I think it was if it was up to them, they'd be like they, they would rather not have this type of stress in their life. <laughs> and I drag them into it and I I feel bad, you know, like in the hotel room. Before we get out here, you just you, and every fighter could tell you it's it sucks, man. You you try to constantly tell yourself, no, you got to be grateful. You got to love the fact that you're going to be fighting tonight. This is what you love to do and all this stuff. But you got all your loved ones that are being tortured every single second of that day and the whole weeks and leading up to it. It's just very torturous. You're doing this on a world stage with everyone criticizing you and your family gets the 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 brunt of it too. So the it, it's it's hard to see them go through that and then so to come on the other side and get a win. Uh, and to see them enjoy that as well is just, I mean, it makes it all worth it. I know Wednesday um, we were we were discussing, uh, you know, what it's like p performing a boardwalk hall because this could have potentially been your last fight. Instead, to flip the script's been completely flipped. What's it like getting a pretty great performance where there's been tons of great performances over the years? Yeah, this is a historic building, man. As you can see, driving up to it, it's historic. It's been here for a while. It's over 100-something years old, I think. Nine, oh, so and I'm, I'm almost 100 years. Almost a 100-year-old building. Um, so it's always cool to come to places like this. I know Arturo Gotti, this was basically his place for years. And uh, so to be able to come in here and put on a show and get that type of love from the people and get Atlantic City booming. You know, uh, you drive around Atlantic City right now, it's, with all due respect, it's not the prettiest place. You know, they got a lot of poverty. Um, uh, and, and I've watched it. You know, over the years, like I said, I've been—I was fighting here in 2009. It was the first casinos I ever went to, um, and Hurricane Sandy hit. I seen it kind of fall, fall, you know, down uh, from that, and it was struggling after that. And then COVID happened, and I think it it, it even it hit even lower. So just to come out here and give some love to the city, you know, is uh, is really cool because it's where I started my career. You know, this place is always going to be a special place to me. Other than that's my boy, what did your dad say after that? He fight? just kept screaming that there was no camera, there was no camera on him or anything. He had the still photo. We were taking family photos. He's like, "That's still my boy." Listen, at the end of the day, I know everybody loves that, but he's he's like the best dad ever. It's as supportive as you could possibly get, and you know sometimes I could get embarrassed by it, just like I'm sure all of you guys could imagine. Um, you know when you have your parents who super like showing you super love and they're pumping you up. 
But at the end of the day, I'm very grateful for have a dad, to have a dad that's here and is able to be a part of it, and he's uh, you know just super proud of me. Is that how you are with your kids as well at sports? I am. I am uh, not. Like I went. I went through this on one of the interviews coming out uh, before this this fight. My kids in one weekend and my nephew, they all won the state championships in wrestling. And then the next day, my daughter won a national championships in cheerleading. That I was bragging a lot of people about. Usually nobody, my friends, family members, nobody really knows what my kids are doing success-wise. I don't, I, 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 don't, I don't, you know, really boast too much. But um, I'm very proud of my kids. And uh, and I love, and, I, and it's not like I have something, there's something wrong with any dads who are boasting up their kids. It's just for me. I'm, I'm more like a little shy with that. Can we break the MSG curse this fall? <laughs> oh, <laughs> can I enjoy Atlantic City? <laughs> Holy crap. Madison <laughs> Square Garden, man. That's, uh, that hasn't been too good to me, man. Uh, yo, Romero. If was, anybody can do it, winning. you can. Yeah, you know, if I came, I came through a lot. I've, I've broken a lot of curses, I think. Um, you know, and I... Coming back from, I think, the worst injury in the history of the sport, the only compound fracture in the history of the sport, um, it's definitely, I, I defy the odds. So MSG, that's in November. Uh, who knows? Who knows? We'll see. I'm happy I got a win tonight. As long as you fight a silver on it. Yeah, just give me silvers. Give me silvers. And your dad's there too, hyping up the crowd. Yeah, we need to get my. I think we need to get my dad, dad in the octagon. I, what would the crowd have done if my dad came in the octagon and gave a "That's my boy"? I think the crowd would have just fucking fainted. It's obvious <laughs> your dad is one of the greatest hype men in UFC history. But is he louder when you fight, or is he louder when your kids wrestle? <laughs> he is. He is loud. Loud and proud all the time. You know, he is uh, he's a guy who loves life more than than most and it's it's awesome to be around to be honest. But it's also irritates the crap out of me a lot of times too. <laughs> but I always you know, there's things we all gotta work on. <laughs> J just letting you know I I did get that clip of your dad saying that. So Oh you did? Yeah, I got Let's it go. out there for you. Tag me. <laughs> I'll, I'll tag you. My man. Thank you, Chris. Hey, I appreciate all the questions, guys. Take care. Enjoy. All right.